One of the beautiful benefits of being able to create your own designs for 3D printing is that it allows you to be creative with everything. I needed a bathroom sink strainer. Now I could have made any old boring strainer and it would have gotten the job done. But I didn't. I made an Iron Man Arc Reactor bathroom strainer. Why? Because I can and little things like that just makes me happy. And every time we have guests, they always comment on the sink strainer. Is that the Iron Man arc reactor? Adults and kids both notice it right away. When was the last time someone commented on your bathroom sink strainer? Anyway, I've got some exciting news for you. The doors are now open to my brand new online 3D design program. So if you would like this superpower of being able to make whatever you want, then you'll want to sign up for my new online program, 3D Design Academy with Fusion 360, designing for 3D printing. I have a link to the details below, but here's a quick summary. The program is designed to get you to a place where you'll have the skills and confidence to be able to design your own models in Fusion 360. It's for beginners looking to get started or restarted on this journey. We follow my popular method, which consists of learn by doing, where we create seven beautiful and practical models. And along the way, I introduce Fusion 360 tools and design concepts that build on each other. I will also show you how to prepare each model for 3D printing. Something I've never done before and will be providing with this course is live online group office hours. You'll be able to show up, share your screen and design, and say, this is where I'm stuck, help, or how do I do this? So if you find yourself in this constant state of feeling like a beginner in Fusion 360, this will be the fastest way to level up your skills and get to a place where your creativity can be enhanced by the software rather than being stifled because you're simply not able to translate the awesome ideas in your head into 3D designs. Now the program will only be open for enrollment for the next few days and then the doors will close. Because this is the first time I'm running this program, Program, I'll only be taking in a few students. I'm also offering it at less than half the cost since this would be my first run and would help me to polish it for future launches. The limited enrollment will work well for me, especially since there's a live online help component to this program and there's only one of me. It will also work to your advantage because it will mean more help for you. I don't think there's any other Fusion 360 program like this, one that will offer as much support as I'll be offering with this program. If you're interested, then go ahead and visit the link below to sign up. All right, let's jump into today's design and I'll show you how I made my Iron Man Arc Reactor kitchen, strink, kitchen sink strainer. That's a, that's a long title. I'll begin this design by using the approach you've most likely seen me do a few times by now, and that's to bring in an image and then use that image to trace my first sketch. So to do that, we'll go up to Insert, and I'll go down to Canvas. I'm going to select Insert from my computer, choose my image, which is this Arc Reactor image. It's a JPEG, as you can see. I'll click Open, and I simply have to select my plane. I'm going to go to XY Plane, and then click OK. You'll see here I have a new folder called Canvas. I'm going to expand it and then right click on the image and go to Calibrate. And I need to calibrate this in order to make it the same size um, that I want to actually print it as. So to do that, I'm just going to click up here and down here uh, to set the diameter. Now I've already measured the drain hole that I'm going to need and I measured it to be 54 millimeters. So I'm going to calibrate this to be 54 millimeters between those two points, hit enter and that sets the right size. Okay, now I can begin creating my sketch. So I'll click on Create Sketch here, choose my XY plane. 
grab my circle tool by going down to create and then circle center diameter circle is what I'm going to go with. Start it at the origin and I'm going to give this a diameter again of 54 millimeters. So I'll type that in, hit enter, and then I'm going to right click and go to repeat that center diameter circle. And I'm going to create another circle. This time I'm going to make this one 48 millimeters. Now 48 because I want this uh, outer wall here or that outer edge to be six millimeters thick and that's just what I felt would be a good size to have so that's what I'm going with and you can see I'm not going exactly with this image I'm just kind of using it as a guide uh, since I'm making this edge thicker and I'm gonna do the same thing when I end up tracing these lines I'm just gonna kind of use them as a guide but I'm gonna want these actual lines to be thicker so to do that, I'm going to grab my line tool and just kind of trace these. Uh, before that, I'm going to grab these dimensions here. I'm just going to rotate this so they're kind of out the way because uh, it's easy to get them confused with your lines when you start drawing. All right, we'll go to Create, and I'm going to go to Line. And now it's just simply a matter of tracing. So let's zoom in a bit. I'll start with this one here. Uh, and I'm just going to go each line and as you can see I'm again going on the inside just to make this uh, um, you know a little bit inset again I'm not following it exactly and I'm not going for perfection here I'm not you know I can get crazy and make these angles exact but uh, I don't think this model actually needs it um, so next I'll do this part right here and I'll just kinda come across come down and if you wanted this to be more precise, what you could do is hit D on the keyboard for dimension. And for example, I could set this angle here. Uh, let's say I'll make that 150, 150 degrees. And then I could do the same thing over here. And if it was important to me that those were the same angle, I can just, when I click to type in this angle, I'll just select this one and that way they will both be the same. An additional thing you could do is make sure the center of this line is uh, lined up with the center of this origin. So I can do that by grabbing my horizontal slash vertical constraint. If I hold shift and select this line, it brings in the little midpoint. Click on that and then click on my origin here and that will bring it so that it's evenly distributed. It basically brings that line so it's lined up with the center here. So I may do a few things like that to get it roughly lined up, but I'm not gonna go too crazy with it. All right, and then I'm just gonna follow that technique and trace the rest of these. I'll actually just trace half of them and then use my mirror tool to mirror it to this side, uh, except for the addition of this triangle in the middle I'll have to. Uh, I can't mirror that, so I'm going to go ahead and make this one. And the same thing with this, I could use some of the alignment tools to get it centered. So I'll grab my constraint here, that horizontal slash vertical constraint. Again, I'll hold shift, grab that midpoint, constrain it to the center, and I'll grab this point here as well, constrain that to the center. All right, now I'll go ahead and create the rest of these. If your line is snapping into certain positions, remember you can always hold Command or Control to override the snapping, and that way it'll just freely move. Okay, now that I have all these lines drawn, I can mirror it to this other side. Um, so to do that, I'm going to create a line from the origin here, going straight down, um, select it, and just make it a construction line. This is going to be my mirror line. And I'll go to Create, down to Mirror. I'll select each of these lines here that I want mirrored. And I'm just double clicking to select the entire chain. Then I'll click on my mirror line and select my mirror line that I just made. And then you can see it on the other side. I'll click OK. And now I have each of these lines here mirrored to this side. I'll untoggle this canvas here so we can see exactly how it looks. Okay, and that's basically it in tracing those lines. So I'll click on Finish Sketch, and now I can go to Create, down to Extrude. I'm gonna select this outer circle here, plus the inside part, and I'm gonna drag the arrow down and extrude negative five millimeters, and then click OK.
All right, that gives me the emblem. But what I want is to have this sort of tapered effect here so that it sits and kind of follows the contour there of uh, the drain and it just kind of sits nicely in there. So to do that, I'm going to create a sketch on my ZX plane. So it's going to cut this in the middle and let's zoom in. I'm going to hit P for project, select that body, click OK. I'm going to grab a point here. So I'll go to create and then down to point. I'm going to place two points. Let me zoom in a bit. One over here and one over here. D for dimension and I'm going to dimension this point here, one millimeters and this point from the edge here at eight millimeters. And next I'm going to grab my three point arc tool. So I'll go to create down a three point arc, draw an arc between these two points and I'm going to give it sort of this inside curve. Click D for dimension, select that arc. I'm going to give it a radius of eight millimeters, hit enter. Click stop sketch. Now what I want to do is take that arc and do a revolve cut around this uh, model. So I'm going to go to create down to revolve. Select that profile there and then choose my axis here. It's going to be this Z axis and you can see where the red shows where it's going to take that profile and just revolve it all around to make that cut. I'll click OK and there you go. I have the exact profile I'm looking for. And just for fun, I'll make this uh, pair the same color that I printed it as. So uh, let me see, I went with plastic, uh, opaque, and we'll grab a blue. And I went with this uh, sort of sky blue. So I'll double click here to choose my color. Yeah, it was something around here, click done. And you, the way you change these, you just double click on the color and you get this other box that you can go ahead and change that color. All right, and that's my arc reactor, bathroom, sink, strainer. All right, leave any questions you have below. I've included a link to the Fusion 360 design for this project in case you want to adapt it to your sink. The link to download it is below as well. Remember to like and subscribe if you enjoy this type of content and I will see you guys next time.